Hey guys, I'm back with a new video. In this video, let us learn about the blocks and the various terms that are associated to it. So first is a block. So block as we know is a container that holds the list of transactions to be added to the blockchain. Now as we have seen, a blockchain is a shared digital ledger that records a list of transactions that happen throughout the network. So if you let this run forever as a one full list, so one full single list, we will end up with an enormous list of transactions. Now this would get really messy to work with or manage. So to get us more control over the list, the blockchain is split into smaller sections. Now each such section is called a block. Now as the transactions are made, they are bundled together and added to the blockchain. So all of the transactions are bundled in a block so which is a small section of the entire blockchain. So this breaks the entire ledger into smaller pieces and each such piece is called a block that we can use to manage the entire system more efficiently. Now along with these transactions, the block also holds some other interesting information. So let us take a deep dive at the details of the single block more closely so while the transactions are held in the body of the block other information are held in the header of the block which is also known as the block header now this header contains additional information about the structure of the data that resides in the block so the hash of the previous block the time the block was made the timestamp the nonce and the merkley root all sits inside this block header. So in this video, let us talk about the two components of the blockchain framework. The first one is the previous block hash and the second one is timestamp. So the previous block hash is the hash value for the block that comes directly before the given block in the blockchain. So if we talk about this block one, the hash of the previous block in this case will be the current hash of the block zero. Make sense? So having this connection that we establish using these links or using this previous block hash links the block together by allowing us to know what block comes before and after a certain block in the blockchain. So this is what forms the basis for the entire blockchain. Now let us move forward to timestamp. So the time that the block was made in is also placed inside the block header. So this helps us to know when certain transactions took place and can also help us to capture things when someone may have tried to spend the same money twice. So it can help us in solving the double spending problem that we discussed in one of the previous videos. So based on this information, we can decide which transactions were valid based on which transactions happened first. So based on the timestamp, we can decide which transactions were valid based on which transaction happened first. So this timestamp is the blockchain solution to the double spending problem. So this was all I wanted to cover in this video. In the very next video, we will learn about the Merkley root and the concept of nonce. So let's catch up in the next one.